And then the electrical system. We've looked at this as well. Really, the only uh, thing to worry about is just the, the circuit breaker panel over here. So to provide power to the individual systems, you push in the breaker. And then in some cases, like on the MW50 or the, uh, you know, the, the cannons or, you know, the automatic uh, switching for the automatic versus manual prop pitch, power is provided through the breaker to the switch. And then you have the switch itself controlling the operation. In other cases, like with the external lights and the interior lights, all you do is push in the breaker and that system is just on and off, just so the breaker can either act as an on-off switch or it can provide power or take power away from a system that is controlled by other switches around the cockpit, the radio being another good example. And I guess we're going to have to, I, I think next mission, it's a navigation mission, so we'll get to employ the radio and see the navigation system and how that works and how we can automatically home in on uh, different beacons or actually different transmitting stations on the ground. So we'll turn off the lights and I'll start to get ready to bring it on down. So we look at the oxygen system, we'll look at radio next time. Armor, we've got armor plating back behind us obviously. It it does hinder visibility back to the rear, especially if you have your head kind of tilted back like that. That big piece of armor plate, you'll, it's one of those things where you'll be glad it's there when you need it. Okay, two's bingo fuel. Yeah, I'm getting about there myself. So I think I'm going to go ahead and think about getting it down. We'll look at armaments here in a later video. And okay, let's go ahead and skip ahead. I'll go to the landing section here in the manual. But first, yeah, let me pull the throttle back. I was running it a little a little high there. I'll pull it back down to the the uh, max 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 performance or max uh, loiter setting and get set up for uh, landing here. Okay, so landing. Jettison any external payload such as drop tanks, bombs, or rocket pods. I don't. Uh, that doesn't make uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you can land a BF-109. I would imagine it would be very odd to think that you could not land a BF-109 with the drop tank for example, still installed, that would just be insane. Those things, well, those things aren't exactly, well, they're expendable, but they're not exactly expendable, you know? Uh, you know what I mean. Reduce speed to at least 350, turn on the governor automation. It is, okay, it's in the automatic position, that's fine. I'm just going to pull the throttle on in and let the speed bleed off a little bit. Once below 350, lower the landing gear and check for the two green indicators. Never exceed 350 with the gear down, so we'll have to have to pay attention to that, but I think once I get a, lot, a little bit more drag on the aircraft that, yeah, overspeeding it in that configuration will be a little bit, a little bit difficult. Okay, so it says that I'm going to get a, I will get an audible warning sound if the flaps are down and the gear are not down, so is that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll check that at some point. I might, I'll probably end up doing that by mistake here at some point, so I'll just let that happen. And I have an alternate gear extension procedure here. So retract the safety switch on the landing gear down button and press the button. So that would be just press the button. That's the normal procedure right there in and of itself. Immediately pull the landing gear manual release handle which is here. Yes, yeah, undercarriage emergency release. Ensure the green light illuminates and if not rock the wings. So that would be fun to <laughs> that would be fun to check out at some point but well not now. I'm, I'm <laughs> running out of steam here both the uh, figuratively and literally so uh, let me uh well just figuratively so let me press on here use the horizontal stabilizer uh, trim hand wheel to uh, get you a good config and a good trim the flaps down rough guideline of minus three so that'll be a lot of nose up trim once we get the flaps down so there's 350 right there let me go gear down and i'm more and more going to get into the habit of using the mouse controls for everything that i can just in preparation for DCS 1.5 and 2. Oh, 2? Did, what, would it not make sense for you to have... That That was not my fault. I mean, you're rich bingo fuel, you're at the field. Why would you not... Why would you not land? Oh, well. Poor 2. I've had bad luck with 2 lately. Okay, so, maintain 220 for the approach, decelerate to 180. So, okay, I've got gear down. And let me go back down below 300. And 
Let me pull the nose up, bleed off some more speed. I'll get the flaps. Let me go horizontal stabilizer, trim nose up a little bit. Okay, 300, let me get the flaps coming. And I'm just holding the mouse wheel right now and flying, actually flying with my left hand as I do this. Okay, two wheel locked, verified. Okay, flaps. Uh, about 10 degrees so far, halfway there. I'm just kind of watching my, my airspeed as I do this. Okay, 250. Maintain 220 for the approach, 180 at the threshold, touchdown. Sparingly on the brakes, make sure the tail wheel is locked, it is. And then raise flaps. This would be, yeah, this would be way after I uh, am on the ground. So, I'm in a good config right here. Let me show the checklist. I might just take it straight in. Let me pull the throttle on in. I'll just shoot for 220 on the approach. And if anything, I'm going to err in the side of landing long on this. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to let it stall. Well, I say that now, but I'm going to try not to let it stall. I'm just going to try to gently let her down onto the runway, and then I'm going to, as much as I can, go aft stick, and that's going to put more pressure on the tail wheel and help the tail wheel keep me aligned down the runway. Okay, so getting a little slow. There's 200. Little throttle up. What touchy? Touchy throttle. Okay, 220. Throttle back in. Yeah, this this feels pretty nice. Let me go trim nose up just a touch. Little throttle to maintain the the glide slope. I feel a little bit of a I feel a little bit of a crosswind. That's fine. I'm still tracking right down. Okay, 220, and don't let her touch down now because I'll bounce. I know it. Just hold it right here, 200, down a little, that's about a, that's about a couple of feet, three feet, two, <laughs> two and a half, <laughs> and I, I did what I always did, I misjudged how, how close, how close I was to the runway, that, that can't be right, okay, well, okay, that's, that's that's unsat. Let me let me take it back up again. I'm going to do the landing one more time. So let's go. Okay, so let me trim for one. Let me try that one more time. I'm going to just do do the the short field takeoff here. Okay, so throttle up. 1.3. Little bit of braking. Just gotta let her fly herself on off. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to leave it configured for... Uh, configured in the landing configuration right now. Now, <laughs> yeah, obviously scraping the wings in the real world, yeah, I probably wouldn't have done that just then, but... No, I've got to give that one more shot because I know that... I know I can do better than that. I think what it was was I just misjudged the altitude I was. I could have swore, just looking around, that I was maybe just holding it off there, you know, maybe like, a, like three feet off of the runway, but I was a little bit higher than that, so I hit, I bounced, and that just kind of threw me all over the place. Okay, so coming around, I'll just maintain, okay, let me pull the throttle back in so I don't get a little bit too fast, and go trim nose up a little bit more. Okay, let me pull it back in, I'll go for about 220. It doesn't. Um, I mean, granted, I'm uh, I'm in I'm in a descent here, but it, yeah, it doesn't really bleed speed off that readily until well until obviously until you get the nose up and start to start to move the nose around a little bit more. So this should this should work out just fine for an approach. I'm just bring it on around. And I can land long. That's no no big deal. Maintaining what am I at? About one one point oh on my my uh, manifold pressure. Okay, fuel still got about 200 liters. Still got plenty of fuel. It's weird the two ran out of fuel so much quicker than I did. That might have been. Well, I mean there are differences in the flight model between the AI air aircraft and what we're flying here. So 
Yeah, 2, I think, was just struggling when I was up there at high altitude. 2 was probably running just maxed out on the throttle to try to keep up with me. So, let's bring it on around. Throttle in. 220. There's the, the bomb dump, it looks like, right there. Or no, that's, that's fuel storage right there, wasn't it? Got the trucks and got the fuel tanks. Okay, coming in very steep. That's fine, though, because I can land it long. This thing will land uh, a very, very short field. Trim nose up just a touch. I'm just going to hold it right here. Now, let me go a little bit lower. See, right here, I thought it was three feet. I'm probably more like six feet. Now, we continue to hold it. Okay, touchdown. Bounced it. Holding it off. Okay, that's better. Now, back aft stick. Just lightly tapping the brakes to keep her aligned. Throttle in. That's, that's more like it. That's more like it. And I think, uh, you know, oddly enough, I was just flying Aleutian 2 Cliffs of Dover, and I was... I did a landing in it, and I was just... <laughs> I just was, like, perfectly uh, judging the... I, I think I said during the landing that I was like, okay, that's about a meter, and I watched the external, and it was, uh, as I was cutting the video together, and it was right at a meter, I, I just have a little bit more trouble in DCS for some reason than I do, well, apparently in Cliffs of Dover, although that could have just been a fluke. Okay, taxi, so let's, uh, let's see, is there anything, okay, retract flaps, I can go ahead and do that, I just need to kind of pay attention to... Yeah, that's horizontal. Okay, there's the flaps. I just need to pay attention to my path down the down the runway. I don't need to take it out this fast either. And let me see, where would I want to park? I started all the way down there at the end. Or no, I started actually back there. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to park it right here on the runway since I'm uh, about beat. Although that is a taxiway back into the hazes right there. I'll just stop it right here. I'll go through the engine shutdown. That's fine. Okay, brakes and stop. Okay, flaps are up. Okay, it's so reset my horizontal stabilizer back to zero. Got it. Turn off the electrical fuel pump on the main circuit breaker. So, is that is that what it's telling me to do there? That can't be right, can it? I would surely I would turn off the pumps right here before I just remove power from the breaker. Yeah, let me do that. This will this will kill the engine. So pumps off. Well, uh, that's surprising. Okay, I, I really expected that to uh, cut off fuel flow to the engine, but maybe there's just enough residual pressure in there, just being just through vacuum force off the engine itself, that you don't necessarily need the pumps. Maybe they're just like boost pumps. Or <laughs> Maybe I'm just very, very confused. Okay, so they told me to get the pumps off and right there, fuel pumps off. Okay. Turn off the radio set using the corresponding breaker. So, bug 16 off. Follow the instructions to taxi and go to the parking spot. Now, okay, and then get into the engine shutdown, which oddly enough was right up here, <laughs> back right after. Startup. Okay, engine shut down. Run it idle for about two minutes to allow it to cool. Otherwise, damage could occur. So, yeah, you're uh, you ain't kidding. It's still up there at the operating temperatures. Although, I mean, that's that's low enough. I think. Set the radiators to the closed position. Pull the engine stop handle to stop the engine. So, okay, pump and then engine stop handle. Where's that at? That's down here, right? No, that's the ordnance emergency release. Engine stop. Okay, so that's the... That's kind of... I think that's what I would call a fuel cock. Engine stop. Yeah, that just... Uh, that's part of the fuel system. That would be what would just... Completely shut off fuel flow to the engines. Okay, so that, that makes more sense. I was kind of associating that function with the pumps. I thought the pumps were uh, really uh, more of what was providing the uh, fuel flow. Although... And that kind of confirms my suspicion about the pumps because, yeah, it does bleed down after time if you have the pumps off, but, okay, so, fuel cock is closed, and that completely cuts off the fuel flow. Got it. 
ignition selector switch to the O position. That's just magnetos off. Fuel feed selector to ZU. Now, now I am confused because did it not tell me to... Okay, yeah, I got it now. Okay, it told me to do the breaker, which would have cut off power to the pumps, and then it told me to pull the handle for the pumps. That that's, just seems out of order to me, but yeah, I'll, I'll trust it. Press the electrical kill switch to turn the power off. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. I see what the electrical kill switch does. All that does is... All that does is just... Reset all the breakers. Well, except for that one. Okay. So it, it at least reset the battery and it reset the generator breaker. Okay, I got it. Now let's go ahead and open up the canopy. And breathe a little. And that should be it, should it not? Yes, it is. So... Okay, pretty eventful mission. Covered a lot of stuff there. All that is really left. All that I really want to get into is really just the radio at this point. I think everything else I I covered, at least to my satisfaction right there. And the way that this always goes and the learning process, or obviously, and also the weapons employment here for the guns and the bombs, that's kind of important. But the learning process when it comes to this is to, the way that I do it at least, is to read the manual, read the procedures, perform the procedures, and then go back and reread about the systems that you just played around with and that you just used. Everything now in the manual will make 100%, 200% more sense than it did before because I've seen the stuff in action and I understand a little bit more about how it works. So that's my next step. I'm going to read up a little bit and then come back next time, do a little bit of navigating, a little bit of radio work, and then get into firing the gun and dropping some bombs. So... Thanks again for watching. I hope you are enjoying these, and I will see you next time.